ethnic or competence. Mamandara plays down rotational presidency. Nigeria's leadership is on the front burner. This is Plus Politics. I am Coyote Ladende. Welcome back. This is Plus Politics. The president's nephew, Malam Mama Daura, has expressed his opinion on the issue of zoning and rotation of the nation's presidency, arguing that competence, not geography, should determine the next president of Nigeria. According to him, the zoning formula which had been adopted since 1999 in the election of the country's leader has failed. This statement seems to have ruffled some feathers as several such as the Apex Igbo social cultural group Ohanese Ndigbo has condemned the call by Daura. The Ohanese insists that it is the turn of the South, particularly the Southeast, to produce the president in 2023. Joining us to discuss this is the President General of Ohanese Ndigbo, uh, Chief John Ngodo. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Kavadi. Nice to have you. And good to have you, too. Okay, let's get the conversation started. Uh, uh, sometimes when we have statements being released by the media aid of some, uh, you know, big personalities, uh, we usually have this issue that is it really the thought of the person or the person is just trying to be proactive? So is it okay to get your thoughts or your position on what, Mal I mean, Daura did say? It's quite unfortunate that uh, Aj Mamandara said what he said. Um, he's a journalist that I've had very high regard for, and I thought he should be more careful, given his close relationship with the head of state, not to steer the honestness or destabilize our polity by making such an insensitive statement. To begin with, the Constitution of Nigeria in Section 14.3 makes a very clear and unfettered provision that in composing the government of Nigeria and its agencies, regard must be had for federal character. Number two, the history of the evolution of this country into one federal unit started with the times of our forefathers, culminating in the achievement of independence in 1960, in which we have three regions and subsequently four regions. The character of a federation in the, in the political dictionary, and as practiced everywhere in the world, is that a federation consists of federating units who donate certain of their powers to a federal government. Powers like immigration powers like foreign relations, powers like foreign defense, but leave residual powers of security, jurisdiction in terms of law courts for the personal, for the exclusive adjudication of the federating units. This was the structure of Nigeria before the military came into power in 1966. By the time the military left in 1999, they gave us a constitution, which was not subjected to a national plebiscite. Mm -hmm. It is not the constitution of the people of Nigeria, in spite of the fact that it starts with we, the people of Nigeria. It is an imposition of us. It has become our ground norm now because we have not had a recourse to a referendum. Now, the Prior to now, the various political parties in the spirit of the Nigerian constitution have adopted a zoning formula in order to ensure that the presidency rotates between the north and south of Nigeria. And of course, each component part ensures that every part of the south or the north gets a go at it. Now, when Yaradua was elected, President. Unfortunately, he died. May he so rest in peace. His vice president immediately took over and, uh, and finished the balance of his tenure. And when he wanted to run for a second tenure, the North cried, no, your tenure is over. And this is how uh, 
General Muhammad Buhari became president and head of state. Now, you don't change the game in the middle of the game. Now his tenure is going to expire at the end of this term. And, and uh, Maman Daura then comes out and says, no, we don't need to zone anymore. More. Any Nigerian can become president. But first of all, that's changing the games in the middle of the game. Secondly, competence is an ex not an exclusive preserve of any part of Nigeria. Therefore, competence by itself can be satisfied by any of the six geopolitical zones in Nigeria. So uh, taking accelerating confidence as a higher criterion for recruitment hides another nebulous and disguised objective. Okay. Because wherever you zone the presidency to in southern Nigeria, there are several Nigerians in each of the three regions of southern Nigeria that can be very effective presidents. Okay. So by zone Mr. Wodo, I, 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 I quite appreciate in other words the statement out there uh, is not being denied by you that this is exactly your position and that's what we have out there. But staying on this issue, let's look at uh, the, if there is anything called merit in what he has said. Now, he has not said that South East should not be given opportunity to be the president. He's only saying the competence, irrespective of the zone. And uh, probably, at least the little I know about our constitution, is that the issue of zoning is not enshrined in the constitution. So where exactly has he gone wrong by saying competence should be the basis and not necessarily zoning, which is definitely not in the constitution? Look, the Constitution, as I told you, in Section 14.3, says that the composition of the government of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the government is headed by the president or any of its agencies, and conduct of his affairs shall be carried out in such a manner to reflect the federal character of Nigeria and the need to promote national unity and also you know, a, a, ensure national loyalty, thereby ensuring that there shall be no section 14, subsection 3 of the Constitution makes it clear that in constituting the government of our federation, we must take zoning into consideration. It is unfettered prescription. And the political parties, in respect of this, since the provision for the election of the president did not expressly spell out this. The parties decided that they must zone in order to carry every part of the country. At no time in the history of our country have people been reminded of their ethnic origin okay. as of today. Okay, uh, Chief, let, let, let's look at it from this angle, if you permit me. I understand that um, this idea of zoning was an initiative of PDP when we had it in 1999, and we had the likes of Ekweme even fighting for to be the candidate of PDP, and when Obasanjo became the candidate. Now, are we saying that it is expressly stated, because I want to believe that what you're saying is implied. If it is not expressly stated, what should be in terms of competence or let's let me even look at the issue of zoning let's even stay on the issue of zoning before we look at competence again uh, I, I hear from the north quoting the likes of uh, 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 yarima shetima the rwy youth consultative forum saying that if we even look at the calculation the north is here to match up with the south that 1999 to 2007 the south was in power talking about the basso 2007 to 2010, that's when the North had three years. And with that of Buhari having eight years, would just be 11 years, less than the 13 years that the South have had. What do you have to say to that argument? I mean, that's, that's a very, very funny analysis. You have to talk about since Nigeria came to being. Hmm. The first head of government in Nigeria was Tafar Balawa. He came from the North. Irunsi came in soon after him and lasted for a few months. And General Gowan took over. And General Gowan was replaced by a 
Mohammed, of Kano, General Mohammed. And he was replaced by Obasanjo in a coup. And Obasanjo was replaced by Shem Shagari. And when Shem Shagari finished, there was another coup. He didn't even finish. And that coup uh, was, uh, as you know, headed by General oh, Buhari. Yeah. And soon after, he went over to General Babangida. And from B General Babangida, we went to an interim government of Shenekong. And from Shenekong's government, we went back to Abacha. And after a very long haul of Abacha, Abacha died. And uh, we then went into the very short time uh, uh, of our transition, you know. And after that period came an election in which Obasanjo won. And after Obasanjo, Yaradua came. And after Yaradua, uh, it, it was Jonathan. After Jonathan Buhari. So if you look at the whole gamut of the Nigerian political history, and don't forget that while this was going on, Chief Abiola won election, which even this government, its members were in part of the government that annulled his election. And it was because of the anger of the South that Abiola won an election and it was annulled that Obasanjo was given a chance. So in the history of Nigeria, Obasanjo is the only Southerner, apart from Jonathan, who has completed a one term as president of Nigeria. Unlike the plurata of leaders that I have uh, listed to you from the north. I mean, if you go through Trafal Balewa, if you go through General um, Gowan, if you go through um, 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 Babangida, if you go through Abacha, if you go through Abdusalam Abubakar, Yaradoa, there has been a, a so much of northern leadership of Nigeria. So anybody in Arewa who is making that kind of analysis is very economic with the fruit. And I think that we should try and bear the facts at the table because our country has never been in the kind of situation it is now. There is so much misgiving about truthfulness, about transparency in governance. Our children, from where I come from, do not feel that they are regarded as part of the same country. Hmm. You go to the entire armed forces of Nigeria, there is not one person from the southeast of Nigeria who is commanding any of the forces of Nigeria. Not even the road safety corps, not immigration, not customs, not civil defense, not prisons, not the Nigerian police, not the Navy, not the Air Force, not the Army. God, my northern but friends will say, Haba, why? This is not the federation that our forefathers founded. Okay, Chief. Uh, and when it is now the turn of the South to have the presidency, somebody begins to say, forget about zoning. You cannot abdicate what you benefited from hmm. after you finished the journey. From okay, Chief. The country. Let, let, before and, we look and, at and this. I'm saying with all due sense of respect to truth that you know, competence is not an exclusive preserve of any part of this federation. Agreed, this sir. country is very well blessed. And I believe that there is no part of this country that you do not have people who are competent enough to defend. I, I, I agree, uh, Chief. I, I, I don't think that is even up for argument. But let's also look at um, what has been over time, looking at the issue of competence. Uh, it's, I, I've listened to this kind of argument when people will say, that even when somebody from the Southwest was at the aim of affairs, what did the Southwest have to show? And when the Southeast, the both the daughters and the, 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 the sons were also at some critical offices, what did the Southeast really benefit? So should we not look at what Southeast stands to gain? Or is it, should we just leave it at the realm of uh, all inclusiveness? Well, if you ask me, really, apart from this semantics of zoning, my fundamental principle is that we should return our country 
to what our forefathers agreed with the colonial masters. We should restructure Nigeria. We should give regional and state autonomy. We should go back to the character of Federal Republic of Nigeria. You cannot, in constitution, have a federation that is run like a unitary government. This is the only example in the world. And it's been done in order to please a certain part of the country. So to run away from all this, if you restructured Nigeria, the presidency would be unattractive. In the history of our country until the military came into power, every area of Nigeria was responsible for its mineral resources. The first oil well of Nigeria was prospected in Oloibiri, in what is now Bielsa State. My father, the late Chief John Wood, was the Eastern Nigerian Minister of Commerce and Industry who commissioned that oil well. It was an Eastern Nigerian well. All the Eastern Nigeria owed the federal government was royalties, as prescribed by constitution, a percentage of the revenue that accrued from the well. It was not a federal concern. But look, all over me here, the coal in Enugu is abandoned because it's a federal responsibility. That coal used to power the whole of Eastern Nigeria. We had a generating plant in Ojiriba powered by coal. It has been neglected since the end of the war because it's a federal responsibility, and this is not a place for development. So the question is not really so much of who becomes the president of Nigeria, but a restructuring of the federation so that everybody can develop at his own place in his own area. And our presidency will be for the powers that the federating units donate to the federal government, which will be powers like external relations, external difference, immigration, you know, uh, copyrights and what have you, you know. And we would, we would for once, I, 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 when, the, when the price of oil was falling, I was becoming happy that people who thought that oil was the only basis for which we destroyed our federal character would now be ready to have a structure. And you know, I tell my friends who come from the North, you stand to gain more on the okay. structure of Nigeria. Because, as you know, there are new sources of power all over the world now. They have discovered a new rock called periscovite, which is used for solar power with a capacity for higher retention of solar power. They have discovered electric power. They have discovered solar power. Now, they have discovered battery power. Do you know that Americans can now fight you in a war without a boot in the field? And they just did it when they murdered an Iranian general in another country other than their own, without stepping out of Washington. And they were not only able to identify him in a convoy, the car he was in, the position he was seated in, murdered him in the car. And as members of his entourage were fleeing from the car, they were able to shoot them one by one and exterminate them. That is a new power that has nothing to do with oil. Benjamin Netanyahu has told us that you can determine the chemical com composition of a plant in a farm without a foot in the farm and cure him. Mm -hmm. What am I saying? This federal character has no longevity. And what is sustaining it? Oil. Abused and corrupt as this administration is, cannot last for too long. Okay, Chief. And is making our Chief, children I, lazy. I have limited time, and I want to quickly explore these uh, before you go, because uh, I don't think, for those of us who have been watching politically, uh, are mistaken about your stand on restructuring, and you've actually never dropped your voice on this issue. But let's quickly look at the reality now. Now we still have election coming up in 2023, and people will say, how ready, how strategically ready are the Southeast? People will say that, who are those big names that we've seen? Who are those people that have shown interest? How is the Southeast even positioning themselves in ruling party? They seems to be one-sided, one-headed direction. There, is, there are two major political parties in this country. And if you include the third one, which has a governor, Abga, there are three major political parties. In all three of these parties, the Southeast is very heavily entrenched. The Southeast has an APC governor here, and members in some of the assemblies, 
The Southeast has very serious governors in the PDP. The Southeast has, is the only party in, I mean, is the only place in Nigeria which has produced a governor outside of the two major political parties, namely Abda. So the South is, is very well appointed in the various political parties to seek nomination. Okay. And there are a plethora of very experienced people in the South, including those who are not even yet in politics, who have okay. basic acumen. Chief. The important thing is let the opportunity be offered. And Nigerians will have a an opportunity to choose who they want. Okay, South. while we talk about the opportunities, how, what is your take about further microzoning it? Because people will say that the Southwest seems to be already shooting their heads out, ready to take over. As it's a bit it's about South, and when it comes to South, we should be able to get it, and not necessarily the Southeast. What do you think about but politics, zoning it? Politics is all about a contest, but the very principle of zoning is that if this is zoned to the South, it is obvious that we have had a general passenger for eight years from the Southwest. We have had Jonathan for about five and a half or six years. And we have not had anybody from the Southeast. So we have never had a, any Southeastern and become executive president of Nigeria, except the very short period that Irunsi was there. Zeke was only a ceremonial president. The executive power was exercised by Tafa Balewa. So if the South would be fair, just, equitable, it would be only really reasonable to find somebody from the Southeast. If the Southeast does not present a candidate that is sellable, the rest of Southern Nigeria can say, well, let's look for someone elsewhere. But I know that several good candidates are bound in the Southeast, that this kind of situation would not arise in any circumstance. Okay, let's also look at this before you go, sir. Um, I look at that statement uh, released by your media aide when he said uh, it is unfair of Dara to look at uh, why should zoning end when your uncle leaves power. That uh, it's, it seems to be talking about zoning and not, uh, uh, and uh, I'm talking about we need to taste power. Is it about tasting power or about serving the people? Look, let me tell you, nobody has a monopoly of competence. You never know how good a man is until you're trying out. You know, the fact that we belong to a federation in which we are all brothers, and only one part of the country has a dominance of leadership. And that dominance has not necessarily led us to efficiency. We must try other people. And that this whole buggy of competence, I haven't seen competence dramatized in any of, of these rulerships that he is re referring to. Look, we are behind the world. Our children are, do you know there are 12 million people in northern Nigeria roaming out of schools, young people in northern Nigeria, and they have had a monopoly of leadership since the, 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 the return of, the, of democracy to our country as well as the military rule. They haven't been able to do that for themselves. I can assure you that you'll be surprised. After all, the Amajiri stuff was consolidated by President Jonathan. He was the one who felt that it was his days to leave children moving around the whole place, and they should be taught in organized spaces. So my brother, what, what is paining me really is that the philosophies of the founding fathers of this country have disappeared under tribal loyalties. Hmm. The things that should unite us is how to take this country to be the leader of Africa and to be a competitor in the world. All the countries that we superseded at independence in terms of economic development have overtaken us. We were higher than Pakistan, we were higher than Indonesia, we were higher than India, we were higher than Malaysia. All these people have now overtaken us in economic strengths. And it's a question of leadership. You can't take me where you have never been hmm. or where you do not know how to get there. Thank you so much. So we need a president who has the vision and they abound in southern Nigeria and plentiful in the southeast of Nigeria. Thank you so much, Chief John Nia.
Ngodo, the President General of Oaneze Indigbo. We hope that we'll speak to you some other time. And uh, to our viewers, the conversation continues. We can continue having this conversation to drop your thoughts on all our social media handles. But the show is not over yet. Thank you for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, the northern perspective of this issue is coming up. Please don't go anywhere.